So I'm going to try and make a video um, as I make my answer key just to help those kids that may not um, be in class on Monday. Okay, so I'm holding my phone as I do this, so my apologies. Um, okay, so this first thing, we're talking about parametric equations, and they're called parametric equations because they introduce a new parameter. Okay, so instead of an equation, um, a Cartesian or a rectangular equation that has x and y, um, these have x and y in terms of another variable t. Um, and sometimes they'll put x of t equals something and y of t equals something. Sometimes they just end up writing um, x equals whatever and y equals whatever. Um, it, that would be perfectly fine for it to have parametric notation without the, the parentheses here. Okay, so as we get started with this, um, typically we use a t. It doesn't have to be a t, um, but it is often talking about at a particular time. Where is, where is your function at a given time? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the different um, x and y values at given times. So at time 0, when I plug in 0 here, negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 5 is, um, is 5. And then I have a slope of negative 2, so that's 3, that's 1, that's negative 1, that's negative 3. Let me make sure I'm right here. Um, plug in 4, negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. Okay, my using slope worked. Um, the next one, um, then I need to look at the y values, y of 0, plug in 0, and I just get 2. And notice my slope is 1, so I'm going to have 2, 3, 4, um, 5, and 6 as I cruise along there. Okay, so um, when I go to graph this, I need positive and negative x's, but only positive y's. So maybe um, I could say, oh, I can't see what I'm doing. Um, maybe I could say, let's just make this the, like the axis, something like this. I don't really care. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the point 5, 2. And then I have the point 3, 1, 2, 3, positive 3. And then I've got the point 1, 4. And I've got the point negative 1, 5. I should be cruising along something like this. Um, that was negative 1, 2, 3. And that, those are the points that they gave us. Now notice it's starting, sorry, um, it's starting here and it's kind of going in this direction. Um, so this could be like a ship is traveling at whatever and so here it is at time zero and, and so forth. Um, they will often ask us to then write this line into rectangular form. So what I would do here is I'd say okay well x is equal to negative 2t plus 5 that implies if I subtract 5 and divide by negative 2 that's my t value um, and then we have y is equal to t plus 2 therefore uh, subtract 2, t is equal to y minus 2. Um, I can set, these are the same t, that's the same time, I can set those equal to each other, and I have um, y minus 2 is equal to x minus 5 over negative 2, so then that's negative 2y plus 4 is equal to, I'm sorry, to x minus 5. If I wanted to put it in a standard form, I have x plus 2y equals, moving that over here, equals 9. If I wanted to put it in slope-intercept form, I have, um, what do I have? Subtract 4, that's a negative 9 divided by, so y equals a negative 1 half. I'm dividing, that was a negative 9 divided by, so that plus 9 halves. Okay, so standard form, I guess I should do that, x plus 2y equals 9, I should put it over here, but whatever. And there's the slope-intercept form. Um, I do have a slope of negative one-half. Oh, guess what I forgot? X, my bad. Um, okay, so one of the cool things that this that we can do with this, um, well, there's lots of cool things, but our calculator will do this for us. Okay, so here it goes nothing. Um, when, I, when I go to my calculator, oh, we were doing IB stuff. Isn't that fun? Um, okay, if I come to graph this, um, I can go to type and I want to go to the parametric equation. And now notice my first um, equation here, it no longer has just one spot, it's got both. It's got the x and the y, and then I have a second equation and a third equation and so forth. But without, I have to have, you have to have both the x 
and the y in order to, to graph these things. So one of them was negative 2t, and notice, okay, I just pushed this button. Notice that, that it's this x theta t. Now when we're in parametric mode, it uses t and not x. Um, so it's 2t plus 5, and then the other one um, is t plus 2. So hitting this, where did it go? t plus 2. Okay, and now I can, um, before I tell it to graph, um, I should have done this before I started, but okay, I'm, I'm going to go to draw. It might be helpful to change my window. And one of the things with parametric um, is, okay, so you've got your x and your y, and let's, let's make this, yeah, negative 6.3, 6.3, that, that should be fine. But let's get some larger um, y values, maybe we'll go to positive 10. Um, but also the important thing, and the thing that's unusual, or that's not in the rectangular form, is that it gives you um, your t values. So it's going to plug in for certain um, certain times. Um, so in this case, it's starting at going from 0 to, so you can think of this from 0 seconds to 360 seconds. Um, as we get more and more complicated situations, um, we don't want to go as high as 360. It'll slow the calculator down. It won't know what's what's happening, or it, it'll just take it a really long time to graph things. So, um, so we can get, definitely go smaller. In our particular scenario, we only went up as high as four. Okay, so we could something like this. Our max could be 10, and then, um, but sometimes if it's really jagged, then they're they're plugging in. Um, they're not plugging in enough values. So I'm going to make that a smaller value, like 0.1, so that it's plugging in more and more. Um, it's going to plug in a bunch of points, but it's only going to go from 0 to 10. OK, so now when I hit Enter and I go to draw that, here comes that line. And that should match what I have right here. Um, so hopefully that's helpful in getting started. Um, yeah, there you go.